only you can prevent piss poor election results. <laughs> Greetings and welcome back to a very tense and nerve wracking episode of the podcast. I'm your host as always. Jason Oliveira. With us today is nothing. What I want to talk about is the election. Today is election day in the United States, and it's a big, tense, uh, grueling day for both sides of the aisle. The, the problem is, is that our, our country has gotten to this point where everything is black and white. There are no more gray, there, or there is no more gray in between. We've gotten to this point where it has to be this way, has to be this way, and if you don't agree with me, we're going to fight, and it's going to be real bad. Now, I'm not going to discuss the candidates or who I voted for. I just want to say that all of you out there who are watching this right now, I know you're all going through what I'm going through, no matter who you voted for, who you want to win. But come tomorrow, um, we really have to get back on track to where we were maybe 20, 25, 30 years ago because things are so out of control. Like I was saying, it, it, it's black and white. And it's a lot of anger and tension that I sense. Like nowadays, um, I don't remember this growing up, but I remember like, you know, being able to talk to family members or friends about politics and our personal views on certain subject matters and policies. And nowadays, it's like it goes from one to a hundred in like two seconds. It's so fast that we can't control our emotions and that we allow our politics in this country to dictate how we feel about each other, which is, it was really gross and disgusting. I love this country. I think it's a beautiful country. I think it has a lot to offer. I think we've gone a long way from the intentions of the founding fathers. I think that we are off track, uh, for both sides of the aisle. I think both of us have just gotten to this point or both sides have gotten to this point rather where we would rather just you know, throw it in each other's face. We'd rather be angry at each other. We'd rather wear fuck Biden or fuck Trump shirts, you know, or in this case, I guess Kamala, it's not really Biden. He's kind of disappeared, hasn't he? Where did he go? Maybe he's just an apparition. Maybe he never existed. Nonetheless, I know how people feel today. My biggest fear out of all of this is what's going to happen if one of the candidates if it's so close, like they're saying, if one of the candidates decides not to concede before January. What's going to happen? We saw what happened on January 6th, and we know that that's possible again. Probably both sides of the aisle. I'm not pointing fingers towards Trump supporters. I'm not pointing fingers towards Kamala supporters. But we've seen what the Trump supporters are willing to do, uh, you know, in the last election. Now, have Democrats got to that point, too? It seems like they have. It seems like both sides of the coin, both wings of the bird are just... I don't know. There's no way to meet in the middle anymore. And I'm hoping that maybe some miracle happens today. Maybe a third party candidate wins. Could you imagine that waking up tomorrow to find out that neither Trump or Kamala aren't going to be president, but a green party or a, a third party candidate would be elected. Um, I'd be really excited to see where that went for our country because we've been stuck in this two party system for so long that I think a lot of things needs to change. And I think the electoral college needs to go away. I think the people's vote is all that should really matter. I don't think we should assign uh, leaders for us to decide whether our vote counts or not. I think we should add term limits to the Supreme Court. I think that's super important because when, if you really think about it, no matter who wins tomorrow, let's, let's say Trump comes out the victor. There are two other Supreme Court um, judges that are up for retirement. They're, they're at that age where they're going to go. So Trump has already placed three. If he places two more, that's going to one side the Supreme Court for the next, the rest of my life, technically, for, for 30 years, probably. Um, and the hard thing about that is that there's no room for change. There, there's no room. And I think that's only going to push one side or the other further in the direction that things are heading. Um, you know, I hate to use the term, but Sometimes I fear a civil war. I don't know what that would look like in today's day and age. Obviously, our previous civil war, which uh, you all know and loved, um, you know, it tore the country apart and it was kind of the North versus South. But we've spread out. This whole country is filled with opinions on either side of the aisle and we're spread out. So it's not like you can say that Virginia, where I live, is red or blue. There are red people here and there are blue people here. They're aliens, though, so watch out for them. No, um, I think that there are um, 
you know, a nice mix of people pretty much all around the country. Obviously, you got a lot of those red states that you're going to see early tonight. They're going to go for Trump. The thing is that the population in those states are so much smaller than the population in, say, California, Massachusetts, um, in larger states like that. And, and the thing that that's why I think the Electoral College doesn't have a right to be a part of our political system. I think that we should be voting for who we want to vote for. I'm not going to get too heavy into policy here. And I know some of you aren't going to vote for one candidate because they support one thing and you're not going to vote for the other candidate. No one, Nothing I say is going to sway you at this point of the game. You've probably already voted at this point. I know I have. But there are some policies that I don't quite understand and I've lost some friends this year that, I, that really broke my heart to over immigration. And, and I totally understand both sides of the argument. We only have support. We only have money for so much. But I think some of that's bullshit too because half our discretionary spending goes to the military every year. We spend, I believe it's eight times more than China, which is our closest closest competitor. That's ridiculous. Why don't we siphon off about 20-25% of that and put it into social programs that can help people out? Immigration is one of the polys that I stand strong on. This country was built on immigration. We are all immigrants. We stole this country from someone else. And I don't think that we have the right and I mean, we have the power to, or we have the power to try to stop it from happening. But I don't think I believe in borders at all. I think they are completely man-made structures that at some point in history, we decided to say, hey, this is my land. Get off of my land. But the fact of the matter is this is one world. But to tell a person, you know, you can't live on my land because I don't want you here. And I'm trying to stay one-sided. I mean, I'm trying to stay no-sided on this. However... I believe a lot of the, the, the statements that come out in the media about immigration and the people who are coming here are very false. Most of these people are good people trying to escape a very dangerous life in South America. They're not coming because they want to. They're coming because it's the only place that they can go and they can feel safe. And I think my heart reaches out to people like that. And I don't understand why, even if 1%, which it's not, even if 1% of those are the bad guys, I don't see any reason why we should stop the flow of the 99% of people who are seeking a better life here. Most of these people aren't coming here to steal our jobs. Hell, half of them are struggling day to day just like we are and thankfully we do have a support system for them however i fear for the future for them i fear what could come tomorrow or what could come in january when our next president is brought in and i really hope that the hearts and minds of people can warm up at least to this policy i totally understand things like abortion you know it's a tough tough call there is no really gray area it's it, i mean there's little gray areas but it, it's kind of black and white it's either yes you can or no you can't but the fact of the matter is i don't think any man should ever tell any woman what she should do with her body and i don't think the opposite either i think we should have full anatomical decisions on what we do with our health our life um and our families uh, i don't think the government should ever intercede on trying to tell us what we can and can't do. However, I do feel like countries like Canada and France and have these amazing health care systems, which are blurred by the lies that certain media outlets will try to tell you. The fact of the matter is, is we are the only developed nation in this world right now that doesn't have universal health care. And it's disgusting because people are dying. People are suffering. Um, let me give you a personal story. I've been trying to, or I've been considering going to seek therapy or a psychiatrist or something like that. I've had some mental blockages and some issues that I've wanted to deal with, but I can't afford to. And I would love to try to fix myself. I want to be better as a better person, as a better father, as a better husband, as a better human being. And the fact of the matter is, is our healthcare system is pretty much the one thing that's kind of stopping me. Um, can I get lower costs? Certainly I can. Can I afford those lower costs in this economy? No, I can't. Unfortunately, everything is so expensive. The prices of eggs is a great example of this. From like 2020 until now, we usually buy 60 eggs at a time because we're a family of four. And my boys really like to eat eggs, scrambled eggs or dunk dunk eggs or eggs over easy. But no matter what form of egg it is, we need a lot of eggs on hand at all time. So when I go to the store to buy eggs, I've seen those 60 eggs go from about $6.99, $7.99, all the way up to about $19.28, I think was the highest I saw them at Walmart. Um, and so like they fluctuate. Now they're about 10 bucks, which makes me feel a lot better. But day to day, it can go up and down. And I can't predict that. And if I'm also getting butter, bread, milk, uh, maybe hamburger, maybe chicken, no matter what it is, what I'm getting, 
the stuff that would have cost me $60 at one point is easily costing me $120 at this point. And it's so hard to get ahead in life because there's no opportunity to, there's no chance to, there's never, I mean, my mortgage has gone up and up over the last 20 years, not by much, but enough that it's significant and has an impact on the income. And I think that we need to fix the economy. And I think maybe one or both of those candidates could do a great job at doing that. I think that we need to resolve um, issues like immigration and uh, abortion and talk about term limits. And I think we need to talk about getting rid of the Electoral College. And these are things that have been talked about for many, many years. But nonetheless, I I'm going to leave you with just that. As you're going out to the polls today, I hope that you vote with your heart and your head knowing that everyone around you is doing the same thing. They, I don't hate you, and I hope that you don't hate me if you're voting for a different candidate, because that's not how I feel. I just feel like we've gotten off track mentally, emotionally, and I feel like we're kind of a disaster in many ways. I want to see a bright future, but at this very moment in time, looking at the election and seeing where tomorrow is going to bring all the way through January really scares the shit out of me, to be completely honest. And it scares me that I have to be afraid. It scares me that we are in a position that we didn't have to be in. We got here on our own accord. Whatever got us here, I don't know. But at some point over the last like 30, 40 years, I'd have to say, I saw that evolutionary change coming and growing and snowballing and sometimes it feels like you can't stop that snowball but I swear if enough of us just stood up and spoke our mind we really could because if there was a great meme once that I saw that saw the leader standing on a board over a cliff and all his followers were standing on the other side of the board on the land we really do have that kind of power with the exception of the military, of course, that we can speak up. We should have a voice. And I think things will change if we, we move forward and we work together to make a better country. Now, the last thing I want to leave you with, we are at 656 subscribers at this point. And for the fun of it, I thought we would do a little contest. When we reach 666, I'm going to send out a little gift package to one of our 666 subscribers. So keep that in mind. If you're watching this and you're not subscribed, consider subscribing to the channel because, A, it would help me out a lot, and, B, you could win some cool, cool merch. Also, when we hit 1,000, we're going to do a much bigger giveaway at that point. Haven't quite decided what that's going to be, but if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments below. And I hope this didn't sway your opinion of me in any way. I just wanted to express my concern, my fears, and what I'd like to see happen over the next four years. So um, if you guys are loving the content I'm creating as much as I love creating the content that you guys are watching, would you please consider subscribing to the channel? Thank you so much. Don't forget to make somebody smile today and make yourself a better person tomorrow than you were today. Tomorrow, let's make the world spin a little bit happier and a little bit more gentle together. Let's sing and dance in the sun and in the rain as one, my brothers and sisters. Live life to the fullest and love every moment of it because you just never know when that last moment's going to come for you. However, never live in fear of that moment. Always live in love. But never let your inner child die. Ooh take care of yourselves, take care of one another, and take care of those around you who cannot take care of themselves, for they are the ones that need it the most. And if no one has told you today that they love you, the vodcast loves you very much, just the way you are. All right, guys, do no harm. I'm Jason Oliveira. This is the vodcast, and I'll catch you guys a little bit further on down the road to 50. Take care, my friends, and happy adventuring, and happy voting. Don't go to sleep with a catch it in your pocket. <laughs>